course, everybody knows that Kim Kardashian and Skeet Davidson have broken up. They are officially no longer a couple after nine months of dating. And honestly, I call this. I think anybody would have a brain call this. I mean, he's the rebound guy. He's the guy who she goes out with because she's just gotten out this really bad relationship. You know, she's with Kanye, who is this super serious, um, controlling guy who has these these mental spats and does all this extra. This could be considered a little crazy or extreme if you're being kind. And Pete's just this fun-loving, normal guy who just wants to have a good time, make her smile. It's not all that extra stress and headache and drama. And she needed that, and he was just—he was that for her. She just needed a good time. She needed a good time. She needed to have fun. This was her own words. She said, "I want to have fun," and she had fun. She had fun with him for about nine months. Then reality sits in, and she looks over at him one day in bed and realizes this isn't where I want to be. And maybe Pete's like, you know what? It's been fun a couple times, but I don't want to take care of all these damn kids. And gradually, they start to realize maybe we shouldn't be together. Or one realized, and the other one didn't. But whatever. However it went. This was never going to last. This was always just to have a good time and, you know, just, you know, take some stress off their mind, or at least for Kim. And for Peter's like, I get to bang Kim Kardashian. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. I mean, I, how many of us would not take her up on the opportunity? I love you, Kanye, but if Kim was looking at me like that, I'm going to have to throw that meat on her too. And I hear some people talk about, oh, well, will Kim and Kanye get back together? And of course they won't. Of course they won't. I think that Kanye was done once Skeet sent that picture of him in the, in, in the bed and saying, I'm in the bed with your wife and talking reckless like that. And I think that and I think some of the comments that Kim has made as far as saying that, you know, after they kissed, you know, she was so hot and bother, bothered for him. She just wanted to get the D from him. She wanted a booty call or whatever. She was just so turned on. It's really foul because if you remember, she's talking about the first time they kissed on the set. Kim Kardashian talking about the first time that her and Skeet Davidson kissed on the set of the uh, SNL when they did the Aladdin uh, skit. And if you remember, Kanye came that show to help Kim and help her out with, you know, her, her, her set, her material, just comfort her. And also Kanye came there to get the, the, the extra sex tapes. So he can he did all that for her. And so for her to come out later and be like, yeah, at that same time where I was crying my eyes out to Kanye and having him do all this stuff for me and, and needing him to be there to console me, you know, I was being turned on by Skeet and I really wanted to mess with Skeet. And I got, I hit up the SNL bosses and managers and got his number and, you know, was trying to talk to him and all that stuff to kind of make you feel away as a man. So I, I don't know. I just think that when you a man, especially when you a man like Kanye, who, you know, who's got an ego and he's going to get all the chicks in the world. When you feel so belittled and so disrespected and put down, you just done. You, I mean, you really done. And I, I don't know that th- their relationship and the working, who's been worse to the other or whatever, whatever, whatever. But I do know that within public, you know, you have shamed me with this man. And that's something that that, that hurts men. When y'all do that, and, and it's kind of done. And on Kim's side, you know, she might be done. She don't, she, don't, she don't need to want Kanye. She's got her own money. She's got her kids now. She doesn't need to want Kanye. So I don't see them getting back together. I just see them hopefully being able to co-parent well and having a respectful, peaceful relationship because these kids are growing up and they are going to be exposed to this nonsense. So you much rather them see, a, you know, you, you both were able to come together and not fight. <laughs> Hopefully. Now, of course, Kanye wouldn't be Kanye if he didn't leave a comment. So he posted a fake news article saying Skeet Davidson dead at 28. And then below that, in little small letters and small font, it said that Kid Cudi was, is uh, scheduled or something, whatever, to perform at the funeral. But won't, or is afraid of uh, bottle throwers. Which, of course, is a, a shot at Kid Cudi for jumping off the stage at one of the festivals because they were throwing bottles at him. Now, of course, if you don't remember, this whole Skeet Davidson, Kanye beef made Kid Cudi and Kanye stop being friends because Kid Cudi was friends with Skeet 
And Kanye felt like he should have been more loyal to him. Kanye felt like Kid Cudi should have been more loyal to Kanye since Kanye has done so much for Cudi. But it didn't work out that way. And he's kind of throwing jabs at both of them. Then Kim told him to take him down, so he did. But it's just funny. And, of course, Kanye's got to take another little shot. It's all a good jest. This ends the skeet chronicles <laughs> in Kanye's bizarre rant life. You know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a chapter of the, of the Kanye rant. That can go on a book one day, the, the Ski Chronicles, the Ski Times, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully now this all this, with all this drama done and with Kanye and Kim seemingly going their separate ways, but they able to co-parent, Skeet find somebody he can love, and everybody be happy. It's the Wackass Podcast. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack it's to me. It's the wackest podcast. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me.